The Bible says, what, what, what do you profit? What do you gain if you gain the whole world? In other words, what the world has to offer. What does the world have to offer? Well, what did Jesus, what did the Satan offer Jesus? Fame. Offered him fame. He offered him money. He offered him power. There you go. That's your trifecta. Fame, money, power. What is wrong with our generation? Everybody want to be an idol. Everybody want to be divorced. Fame, money, power. Because they believe that if they get to this pinnacle place, they'll be happy. But what they don't, for some reason, they miss behind the music all the time. They forget to look about the ones that's... Why is it all these stars end up the same way? Can't nobody stay married. Everybody messed up. But they famous. Yeah, they got money, but some of them are prisoners in it. Are you understand what I'm saying? So this generation, because this generation lacks a, uh, uh, lacks a true home component, when you don't have a, a, a solid mother and a solid father, important worth and identity in a child, they got to go, 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 go to Hollywood and make their way. They got to go get fun. They got to get somebody to adore them because they have, they so, they missing an identity. So they got to go out here and find out how to rap or how to sing or how to strip. Because they're looking for identity. They ain't stripping just for money. Some of us an identity. Y'all Nobody ever told the girl what she was until she took her clothes off. When somebody said what she was after she took her clothes off, that's how she gets affirmation. See, see, when you don't, I just said that before I started, when you don't affirm your children, when you don't touch them and hug them and let them know who they are and speak into them, you are leaving a void for, 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 the, for Satan to send somebody to tell them a negative picture of who they are. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Are y'all there? When a boy doesn't have a father, he'll go to the streets and look up to whoever he think is strong. That's the reason why they sell dope. Selling dope ain't always for money. A lot of it was for prestige, clout, just to be somebody to get a name. Say amen. That's what father's supposed to impart into you. Are y'all there? When a father doesn't, when, when a father's not there to, to, to raise up a daughter and, and give her adoration and affection, say adoration and affection. These are two things women want. Two things they're doing everything for, fighting for. Slashing other women to get it. Just trying to go on to women. Looking for it in other women. Say man. Because a father imparts. I know we thought fathers wasn't important. But see now we're seeing the manifestation of a fatherless society. Nobody know who they are. Everybody won't be famous. Nobody had no discipline and no commitment to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? When a father comes and he begins to uh, uh, give, a, give a daughter adoration and affection, she begins to start understanding the masculine heart. He starts to, he starts to feel those, 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 th that longing for masculine affection. I said the right way now. He fulfills that masculine affection. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And he starts already telling her and showing her, you're beautiful already. You're already somebody. You're, you're the apple of my eye. So when, so when a child leaves the house like that, she's already filled up. She ain't no, ain't, 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 she ain't at her looking for no void. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no, ain't, ain't. she don't need nothing to come along and fill her because she's already filled up with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if you don't live with your children, if you don't live with your daughter, affirm her. Affirm her. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if you don't, some boy will. And when he do, he's doing it with a motive. And this is the reason why women don't know real love. Because every time they got attention from a man, it costs them. But real love don't cost you. And so a father was the one that was supposed to be the one, the first one to impart real love. So she would know when a man loves you, he ain't always withdrawing from you. Oh, boy. But because she didn't have a father that gave her unconditional love and, and, and sold into her constantly, she, she only knows love if it's a withdrawal. So that means if you do for me, I got to do something for you all the time. So most of us just really just start trading sexual favors. We don't call it tricking, but you might as well put... That's the oldest profession it is. It's really the sexual favors. Just sexual favors. Just, let's, let's not play around. Just sexual favors. For attention. Sexual favors for attention. 
because are y'all there? So this is the and, and then the then the boy he never had his father show him how he's supposed to first of all take care of a woman. See, this is what I'm showing my sons. What they're seeing is I don't I don't have a woman that's taking care of me. I'm, they see to, you take care of a woman. Now, that, this is the reason why y'all getting jokers instead of men. Because once they, they, they when, a, when, when if, if he learned that but when he, to get a woman, he must take care of, he ain't going to be going out there with women. He going to be thinking for the, he ain't going to be, y'all don't want to talk about this. Are y'all there? Because he's not going to want more than he can take care of. Y'all, are y'all there? This is, these are the things that father, I don't know how I got on this. I was, I was somewhere else. But these are the things that fathers impart. And because we are a fatherless society, let me help y'all. Because we are fathers, a fatherless for society, we have used medication in strains for discipline. So now instead of, and I ain't talking about just the young ones, even the older ones have to be medicated to deal with themselves. A young Ridlin would be an old Ridlin addict. We found that that's cocaine. This is the base of it as a, as, as a substance of cocaine. But we can't give a child an aspirin, not even a toothpaste without asking their mama, but yet they are medicated. Why? Because they have to, they have to back up their failing social philosophies. They, they, they all, listen, listen, they have to try to fix the effects of kicking God out of the culture. So when you don't have God in school, you have to figure out another way to restrain. Because when they had God in the school, the child had more a moral compass to know, don't do certain things. But when they take God out, they see they're going wild. So what are we going to do? We got to come up with a way to cover our mistake. Amen. Instead of saying we were wrong for doing it, we're going to cover our mistake and start medicating them. And we found that out that ain't working either. Are y'all there? We, why am I saying that? Because this is how people are losing their soul. They, I say your soul is your mind. Your will and your emotions. The Bible says your soul makes up your mind, your ability to think, your reasoning, your will, your, where you make decisions, and your emotions, where you feel. People are losing their soul now to drugs. Not just to street drugs. It's to these psychotropic drugs that are, has the same component as street drugs with a little bit of something more dangerous in it. A person used to know what cocaine was. You knew what it done. Now they got a pill that has a little of this and a little of that and a little of this. Something from Antarctica, a bird told, you don't know what that's in there. All of a sudden a person take it and they run around trying to try, try eat people. You try to fit, y'all. And they legalizing it and making more drugs even though they tell we just, we just watched this where they said the drug was, was bad for you, but they still, they still legalized it. Now we get to the point to where people, society is, is, is so, is so is, is, what probably man gained gain the whole world losing so society is so in loss now. Now they want to legalize the drugs as if legal drugs are going to motivate them if you were smoking weed doing nothing before. You're going to do nothing is now legal. You really going to do nothing when they legalize it. Because you're going to, what, what are they going to say? It's legal. So this is the problem with our society. We're losing through, now, let me break it down a little bit more. The word drugs comes from the Greek word pharmacia. The word pharmacia comes from the word sorcery. This is what drugs are. Sorcery is witchcraft. 
witchcraft is the, mix, the, the mixing of potions in order to captivate a person's soul. Let, 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 let me say it further. Witchcraft is the mixing of potions or concoctions to capture a person's soul to detain them for a spirit. That's the, that's the deepest definition I can give you. I know y'all think witchcraft is cute like Harry Potter with a wand. No, sir. Witchcraft is for the detaining of your soul for a spirit. When a person curses a person, when a person, now listen, when a person is in the voodoo or black magic, they curse a person, they sent the spirit to them. You don't even have to use black magic. That's why the Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. If you start speaking evil against somebody, you can release spirits on people. So you have to be careful. Uh, Jesus said, listen, Jesus said, you can have whatever you say. So you speak. So in other words, the laws of the spirit world work by words. That's why the Bible says that God created all things by the word of his power. He ups, he's upholding all things by the word of his power. The Bible says everything was created by the word. That's why when he said, let there be light, he spoke light and the, his word, his word created light. So the, in the spirit world, the word is more powerful than the arm or the gun or anything. It's the word. So Jesus is trying to get us to understand y'all fight is the fight in the spirit world. Paul said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We ain't wrestle against people. It's not natural, but we wrestle against principalities, powers. These are spiritual beings we're fighting. Say amen. amen. So Jesus said, y'all fight is in the spirit world, and I'm trying to teach you how to get the results in the natural, in the spirit. Talk to me. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, bound in the spirit. If you, if you, no. Uh, Whatever you agree with on earth, will be, I agree with in the spirit. So it's the spirit realm that's really your, where, where your fight is, the invisible world. Can we talk or not talk? Now when Hollywood told y'all that, y'all believed it. When paranormal doors are slamming, y'all believe it. Now they got psychics now that's becoming uh, 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 prophets. I saw this psychic lady, and they calling her, and she just like a big prophet, rock star prophet now. And I said, this is, she's a clairvoyant. This is a spirit of divination. This is what God said. These type of people in the Old Testament, they would have stoned them. But witchcraft has become normal. So we go to getting our palms red and psychic. These are the things that are taking over people's soul. Why? Because if you touch the things, if, if you don't understand Satan's devices, and you don't know what he's put in the world to trip you and trap you, when you touch it, you will open yourself up for a, for a spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, we don't call it spirit. We call it schizophrenia. We call it bipolar. We call it a nervous tick. Talk to me. I'm just hearing voices. <laughs> don't that, I thought about that. If I'm hearing voices, then something's talking. If, if, if something is actually talking. What the devil said is you talking, so, so, so you mess yourself up. Now Satan has a voice. Oh, y'all, oh, oh, I ain't got time. Uh, let me get you. I'll, I'll get you out on the water, then you have to swim back. Are y'all there? So, so, so because uh, we have, uh, uh, because Satan's tricks and devices have become entertainment, we don't see nothing wrong with touching them. I saw something where now people can go and buy, I think, Ouija boards from the toy store. And I said, Ouija board, I mean, it's witch board. It's a witch board. It's a tool of divination. When that thing automatically starts moving, it's a spirit moving it. Why come Hollywood can tell us and we can't, but the preacher can't say it? Are y'all there? The problem is, is we've been desensitized to the Christian understanding of the demonic. But Hollywood's understanding is the entertainment side we cool with. Say amen. Are y'all there? So how do I lose my soul? The whole point is you got to mess with something that belongs to the enemy. So this is the reason why we have the thou shall not. 
we think it's there because God's just a mean God. He just don't want to have no fun. He's just trying to take all the way. No, he's saying if you mess with these things here, your enemy going to capitalize on you. This is his domain. His domain is sin. He's the father of sin. And if you touch his stuff, he has a right to inhabit whatever you mess with. Why do you think the Bible said when Jesus said, if your hand sin against you, cut that hand off. Now, we know we're not going to cut it off. You better repent. <laughs> but what he was saying was, uh, your, your, your hand can be inhabited by, <laughs> by the enemy. If it's sin. Uh, uh. That's why I be trying to teach you, brother, about masturbating. I said it. That's where you say this stuff at in church. The church folks are doing it. Cats in the world, they can go get a whore, go get a stripper. The church folks are sneaking. <laughs> y'all want to know about it. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So when you, whatever you sin with can be inhabited. This is the reason why certain parts of your body are sick. The Bible said, listen, the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. Whatever part of your body you use to sin, it, that part can be inhabited or be cursed. The Bible says if a man, listen to me, listen to me closely. The Bible says every sin is without the body except the sin of fornication. Because when a man fornicates, he sins against his own body. He starts corrupting his temple. So when a person gets into certain stuff, y'all went, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. I'm saying this. See, this is the reason why people have throat problems. They sinning in them areas. I said it. Some female issues and stuff. Down in the private pool. Y'all want to talk? Prostates in trouble. Because they sinning with it. You know what I want to talk? If the wages of sin is death, whatever I sin with is going to die. It's in that area. Whatever I'm sitting with in that area is going to die. It don't mean it's going to fall off. <laughs> but a person going to be sick in some way, some, in some area. Are y are y are? The wages of sin, the payment of it is death. So we're losing because we don't realize that God is not necessarily judging you. The sin result is judging you. A man, what a man sows. So most of the stuff we're saying God is doing is really you just reaping the stuff that you're sowing. What is it about? If you sow to the flesh, you reap the corruption of the flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When, listen. A person that's vain, that's a vain, they really a vain person, they start losing their beauty. It's a sin. Vanity's a sin. Ain't nothing wrong to be cute. Ain't nothing wrong to be nice looking. Don't have to be ugly <laughs> to be saved. But when a person's caught up, you know, I'm talking caught up in it, they start losing it. Why you think about cutting themselves and putting stuff in and putting and spanking it out and all that stuff? They, they, you losing it. You focus too much on it. You so focused on that, you can't do nothing for the Lord. That's right. People need your testimony. You can't. You too busy spanking it. Too busy. Stop. When men are into sexual sin, they start having issues. Have y'all seen this? This up now. I know y'all done heard of this. This thing where this up spiking. All these men have 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 dysfunction now. Why you think that? Why you think they cursing themselves? Young men are running around here dysfunctional because they have cursing themselves by sinning with that. I'm saying it. This is the reason why people get offended when you preach this way because, you know, we want that, that, that fluffy gray stuff. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save you or save it or save your life. I want, I'm trying to save, I'm trying to help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you, if you sin with your mouth, you 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 can be in trouble with your mouth if you if you if you tur cursing folk, cussing people out all the time. You get that runoff at the mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to help you. So what profit a man to gain the whole world? See, when we gain the world, when we get when, the more you get from the world, the less you lose of God. See, what people don't understand, this Christian generation don't realize. The Bible says to be a friend of the world, it, you are enemy of God. That means God and the world is totally in opposition at all times. 
what is the world? The world is the broad road that Jesus was talking about, that everybody's going the same broad way. What does that mean? That means every trend, fad, and culture, we're down with it. That's the world. The, the kingdom of God goes in contrariness against it because the Bible says that, um, the Bible says that, uh, 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 um, um, that Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but I came to bring division. So a man's enemies are going to be those of his own house. His own family going to turn on him when he really starts living for me. So this means when you're really living for God, the world cannot accept you. I know we don't believe it because we, you know, church is, church is so watered down and weak now. We don't believe it, but the world cannot accept you if you're really, really living for God. They ain't giving you no record contract in Sony and you living for God. Sony don't want no Christians. Ain't no, they ain't make you no America, American idol when you saved. When you saved, that's why they can't, the ones that saved never go nowhere. That's Satan's domain. He's the one that makes stars. Satan's the one that makes you famous. Jesus makes you infamous. Infamous is different from famous. Infamous means look at what he done. Famous is look at who he is. Look at him. Look at him. Mary. Two different things. People start loving when you're infamous. People love you for what you've done. You have a legacy. But when you're famous, that means you just, they just in the limelight right now. Are you, come on, talk to me. See, oh. See, this is our problem is that we, in, this, in our generation, we don't understand Satan's offers. Say his offer. Satan makes an offer. And the offer is tailor made to fit you. He won't offer you what he offers me. Because he knows we different and what I need or what I'm into or what would make me trip up, it's not the same as you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He needs to, now listen, when you start, when, this, 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 I'm trying to help you. When you start walking with God, Satan will come with an offer. This is why all the washed up has been actors and artists, the minute they go get saved, they all of a sudden they get back in the limelight. Like all of a sudden they get back famous again. Satan just brought them back away from God. He made them another offer. He made them famous in the beginning, and they chased fame for the rest of their life. Then when they gave up on fame and went to God, he said, oh, no, I can't let them go to God. Let me give them a record deal. Then, he, then these has-beens come back. Y'all don't want to talk. Now, now you, when you get saved and you start walking with the Lord, Satan makes you an offer. He comes with an offer. It could, be, it could be wrapped up in the package of a man. All of a sudden, baby daddy really want to get himself together and settle down. He don't want God, though. He just wants to settle down and just, he just wants to, you know, he just, he just, he just wants to settle down. But, you know, he, he's, he's, he's thinking. But he don't want God. Now you got to decide. Are you going to go with what you know when you know that are you equally yoked or not? Or, or are you going to just, it was just an offer. It was, you start walking with the Lord, you get saved, you start walking with the Lord real good. All of a sudden, here come a good job. But this job, you work on Wednesdays and Sundays, can't get the Bible study, can't get the prayer. There's a decision. That Satan made you an offer. He knows that once you still lay away from church, you're going you're gonna to get carnal and cold and get out in front of the word and fall back. He just made an offer. We are not, we, are, we, we don't understand Satan's offers. Are y'all there or not there? This, this, this is the reason why it's very difficult to live for God when you have not decided with conviction that I'm going to follow him no matter what. Because whatever he offers me, I'll have to always choose that in, for, in place of the Lord. Some of y'all are messed up because you can't serve God because you want to be married. And that's why you can't serve the Lord. But until you cast that bread upon the water and let it return to you after many days, you're not going to really be able to serve the Lord. And, and, and your idol is marriage. That's your, that's your idol, is marriage. People go to church to find a good man. 
People go to church to find a good woman. I tell people don't go to church if you're looking for that. That's the worst place to go. Because you ain't doing nothing, but you in a place where everybody, where, where, where bad folks are looking for good people. Because people that are good ain't looking. They're waiting. See, let me, let me help y'all. If, 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 if I'm over here selling steak, top of the line, Kobe steak, steak from Japan, Kobe beef, most tender, pure, prime. And this guy's over selling hamburger, he's selling pork chops, and all that. I ain't gotta, I, I, I ain't gotta advertise. I ain't gotta run after no sales. I ain't got to put myself out there on display. I got the best. You got, if you want the best, you got to come here. Oh, then go, the discount line, the pork chops is down there. If you want steak, steak draws you. Steak will make you change your life. You, you, now, 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 now your sister's got to hear me. Do you have enough steak for a brother to change his life? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do, do, do you know, because you, you know how, you know, you know, when a, you know, when a person really wants something, they'll start doing things to show they want it. Do you have enough esteem? Are you secure enough that a brother is, is, is unsettled? That if he lets you get away, he's unsettled by the fact of you getting away. He's unsettled by that. I mean, I never see another woman like this. But pork chops are cheap. I get a pork chop anywhere. Smother them, barbecue them, glaze them. Only one way to cook a good steak. One way. One good way to cook a good steak. But, it, but pork chops is common. That's why you got to do it all kinds of ways. To hide the taste, to hide the fact that you're eating a pig, all that, you know, just got, you got bugs, you know, and little bacteria in it and everything. You got, you got fried till it's hard as a brick because it's anal, you might be biting into some listeria. And then, the, then the, all the way down on the end, the fire, fire end, that's bologna. That's a mixture of all the bad, the tongue, and the chicken, and the turkey, and all that's mixed, and that's what people eat. But when you want steak, honey, listen, when a man wants steak, you weed out a lot of them cats that, that's not going to jump that high. Man, how am I getting on this? You weed, you, you weed them brothers out because they say, whoa, price is far above rubies. I ain't ready to do it. Let me leave that alone. Let me go on. Let me go find something. Let me go there to the baloney line. The baloney line, it's always there, it's free, it's cheap. It's cheap. It, I ain't really want it, but it'll hit the spot. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Listen, honey, men assess things by value. Some of you women got to hear me. How am I getting on this? I wasn't even talking to teach on this. Men assess value. Everything in a man's life is about value. What the first thing a man will tell you is how much something costs. That's what we talk about. When he get mad, he start talking about how much something costs. Man, them shoes cost sixty dollars. It's always about what it costs. You let that boy throw a cereal. That cereal was. <laughs> you waste that whole thing. I mean, that milk was five dollars. Men says everything for a man is value. When we talk to each other about a car, first thing, man, yeah, I paid thirty five hundred for it. We talk value. We see everything in terms of value. We see everything in terms of steak, pork chops, and bologna, if we really think, be honest. It's levels of value. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? The more common and easy access it is, the less valuable it is. We got some mid-range chicks. You know, when you can't get steak or pork chop a dude. You get a pork chop, the other white meat. You get a pork chop when you can't get steak. But when you, but, 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 but steak is in the class by itself. And men know this. 
men know this. That's why a lot of times me and my wife, we, if we go to a steakhouse, she don't really like steak too much. And I'm like, man, this ain't no reason to come to a steakhouse unless you're going to get a piece of steak. Because, and then, we, and, and we don't, I don't look for the, the flank or the cheap. I don't look for that. I'm trying to find the, the biggest P, the, the best. It's a success value. Well, baby, you're going to pay $20 for that? That's just too, baby, that's, just, that's, that's so high. Do what? But she don't understand. I, look, I know what, I know what five-hour steak tastes like. It'll break your back teeth. You have a steak, be too, you too so long, this muscle here is growing. <laughs> you have a two some steak so long, I mean, the muscle, this muscle's done got to exercise. This muscle starts sticking out. That's how bad it is. No, I don't want no five-hour no flank. No flank steak. <laughs> that's that hard steak that you got to, that's that steak you got to do like a brisket and leave it on for nine, ten hours to get the tenderness in it. But anyway, but, val but, but we assess value to everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I taught my daughters that. That's one thing I, I, I taught my daughters is that, um, you know, my daughter, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Stisha, you know, she's 24. She's getting ready to move to Costa Rica. Amen. Uh, but... But she still lives with us now. You know, she's great graduate, but she still lives home. But anyway, the point I'm making is she had a job since she was like 18, 19. She always had a job, but I always, t I always paid for her. I always took care of her. I always bought her, took care of her, made sure she had everything. I always paid provided. I still bought all the food. I still made sure she had a roof over. I still did it all. Still pick her up, take her places. I still do that. Why? Because I'm trying to, un I want her to understand you're valuable. When you're valuable, you're treated a different way. When you're, when you're valuable. So, I, so, 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 so what I'm trying to get in her mind is how to, how to assess a man. Does he know how to treat value? Because if he's a real man, he can see value. And if he ain't no real man, you better let him know what value is. I don't ride in buckets. No, 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 no. I don't ride in hoopties. I don't ride. No, 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 no. I don't ride in this. I don't, I don't with no man with his pants hanging off. I don't do that. Because you make me look not valuable. And you, can't, I ain't, and you ain't gonna be cuter than me neither. You don't wanna be with no man look better than you. Some of y'all says the heart's broke because y'all going after always after El DeBarge, or Chico DeBarge, or Pretty Ricky and them. You always after somebody look better than you. Just get, find your level. One of these brothers, he might not be looking all that, but he he understands value. He will cherish you. This brother looked too good. He done had three, three or four of you. You nothing. He go to the store, they hitting on him. He can't go nowhere without the women looking at him. And you sitting there, oh, look at, look at my man with his baby hair laying down. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. You don't want, you, you really don't even want a man like that. I mean, you want your man to look nice, but you, you ain't got to have no doll. You want a strong brother, a man that, you know... Brother, handle this business. <laughs> Are y'all there? I don't know how I got on this. I don't even know how I got out on this. Are y'all? <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if a brother's good, he may not understand style. I learned good brothers don't real good brothers don't understand style. No, re, the real good ones don't understand style. The bad was no style, because that's what they used to hook you. That's all they got is they looks. They put everything in they looks. They all they shaving their chest, they have, you know, everything is pretty, because they, they, that's all they know is how to grab a woman. But the but this, but brother don't look that good, they don't know style. They saving money. He ain't got all this money on him. The brother <laughs> Brother, too pretty. You, you, you. He, his, his game is his look. But a brother, the brother might not know his style. Then, that, then you can help him a little bit. Help him when y'all married. 
Don't help him now. Because, you know, you don't really want to help him now. Because you're going to make him look too good for you. Don't make him look good for nobody else. He ain't committed to you. Let him be ugly till he's committed. Don't worry about what your family and them say. You get a good sharp pair of clippers and some nice britches, boy. <laughs> boy, boy, be sharp as a tack. Get him some shoelaces. <laughs> Shoelace, get his teeth fixed. That brother be baby. He's turning heads. Don't worry about what they say. Y'all, y'all missing brothers because y'all, 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 y'all messed up with this fantasy. This is this Hollywood that messed y'all up. Everybody pretty is taken. You, you might have to come. I ain't saying, I ain't saying, Lord, you're standing because see, my, my standing ain't looks. It's hard to say that when my wife is pretty, but I'm listen. I'm saying, my standing, I ain't talking about looks. I'm talking about. Uh, 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 a brother has some uh, fortitude, some stability, security. A good job, go along. A good job will beat pretty hair, baby. Shoot, a good job will beat all of that. that all of that. <laughs> good job will beat that pretty nails and hair and all that stuff. No, a good job will, a good job will compensate. Let me move on. Oh, God, I don't know how I got out on that. Are y'all there? I'm trying to tell y'all because, I, you know, I counsel this stuff a lot and people don't understand how to choose these brothers. And I'm trying to tell y'all that, 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 that good men, they present themselves. You never have to present a man. You never have to. A good man will present himself. One of the things I learned about a good man, good men do not hide in the shadow. A good man ain't trying to pull you off Amen. to himself, Amen. over here, away from your people, or away from the church, or get, let's go out to dinner, let's, let's go over to the movie. The teacher try to get you away. You say, no, well, let's go to church. Uh, uh, I go to church over there. No, he ain't, he, he's trying to get you away. No, a good man's going to present himself. Amen. I remember when I was, uh, when I had met Brother Tim, Brother Tim up in the booth. I met Brother Tim, and uh, Brother Tim was one of Sister Rachel. And Brother Tim, when I met him, that brother came and presented himself. Uh, to me as a pastor, he came and presented himself. I said, what's up, brother? I mean, that brother came so strong, I was convinced. I, had, I, I don't think I even asked him a question. They would tell you, I, I don't know if I even asked him a question. I don't even know if I even said, you know, I go through Mercy Council. I don't even know if I did that. I was so convinced. Brother came strong, presented himself. She gave him the steps that I gave her. Y'all don't want to listen. Nobody want to listen. So I'm trying to tell all y'all who you think you know everything. You need a man that knows a man. A pastor know a man. That's why these Negro don't want to come to church. Because they know a man going to look through that pretty Ricky look and say, boy, I'm going to ask him. The first question is going to reveal. I'm going to ask you one question. Where are your children and where is the woman you was with? Because that's going to that's gonna answer it. We gonna, that's going to answer all oh, y'all. Want to, that's going to answer everything. Oh, uh, when, so, uh, uh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, 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 yeah, see, he's lying now. Uh, uh, see, we, we couldn't, we just couldn't get along. And uh, I just had to move on and had to, you know, just, you know. Well, it's okay to move on, and you know, if you ain't married, you can move on. That's fine. But then, but but, right, okay, you taking care of responsibility? Are you, you, you know, you paying your child support and everything? That's right. Well, uh, well. so you want, so you looking for her to take care of you? I don't raise up women to take care of men. <laughs> ain't gonna be no pimps in here. We ain't got no big church, but I'm telling you, as long as I'm past her, I ain't raising no woman to take care of no man. My daughter better not take care of no man. Well, once she, well, once she marry him, I have to back up. Because, I, you know, I have to back up. But you better believe I'm going to pray hard. I'm going to pray hard on him. He going to get mean mug every time I see him. going to get mean mug. I'm a, every time I see him, he going to get a mean mug. Every mess is going to be about him until he changes his evil ways. <laughs>
but we have changed now where we take care of, we don't twist the role where we're taking care of women. I mean, we're taking care of men. How much, how much is that speaking to your value that you were supposed to be taken care of, but it's done changed? You're more valuable than that. But see, we discount ourselves to the baloney rack because we don't know our worth. And if we own a baloney rack, all it takes is baloney wrap. Now, how is it you've been saved for all this time and somebody with some baloney wrap can come and get you and snatch you out of here and snatch you away from God or, or mess you up? How can, it, how can that happen? It shouldn't be. Baloney wrap is just what it means. It's cheap. It's cheap. You don't even know what that red thing is around. What is that red piece around the baloney? That's got, that's probably, the, that might be baloney. <laughs> that red, you know, what is that red piece? That's wrap. That's wrap. That's how cheap it is. And these brothers come in here and come into church and just snatch these sisters out because they still don't have, all this preaching and prophesying and teaching ain't got no value. They still ain't figure out who they are. They said they figured out I'm, I'm a ruby. I, my value's high. I'm worth more. Y'all want to know. Ain't nobody else going to tell you. what. Ain't, no, ain't nobody going to say what I'm saying to you. I got two daughters. I, by my daughter, I, I got two daughters and I value them. I value them. I got a wife. I value my wife. And I know when I got married to my wife, I, I, I couldn't come with no baloney rap. I had king rap. I didn't have no king money, but I had king rap. I told it, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. She see. Amen. 17 years later, she's still seeing. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so you have to, you, uh, how did I even get, I don't even know how, how did I even get out on this stuff? Y'all promise y'all wasn't going here. See, maybe somebody need that. Maybe you need that word. Turn over here. Let me just go and finish this. Let me finish it right now. Let me finish it. I don't know why I get on there. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm I, you know, I preach on relationships a lot. That's what we're really into. That's what's wrong with us, if we really want to be honest. It's about some relationship. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I get that say, man. I just want to help you. See, this is this is what I call father preaching. You don't hear this a lot, you know. Father preaching. It, 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 it even it even deals with men. Now 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 when this type of preaching hit a man, they leave out grumbling. Oh no, baby, don't worry. The word got him. If you're a smart woman, you don't agree with that. No, the Lord got you. The word, the word got you. Because I'm telling you, most men want to do right. I learned that. I know that. I know y'all hope y'all to believe, but most most black men I've met want to do the right thing. Many just don't know what the right thing is, because they always got somebody, some sister, some woman, some mama, somebody somewhere. Always some guys always in their ears trying to control them. And when they try to get saved, no, that ain't the way. That's not how we was raised. And, you know, you can't go that deep, you know, and that's too deep. Go on down here to Red Ebenezer on the corner where we used to go. Red Ebenezer is, is 116 years old. The church is old. <laughs> I mean, when you walk in our old field, you, you, just, you just feel old. <laughs> you walk in outside, you start walking slow. It's old. You got no new revelation in here. It's old. Ain't no young cats in here. They ain't got nothing. They ain't saying. They ain't speaking to nobody. You need, you need to be around people. All right, let me move on. 
Lord. <laughs> you ever been to an old church? Oh, I ain't, I ain't knocking old people. I ain't saying old people. I'm saying the church is old. Everything's old. The organ's old. The wood is old. I mean, it's all old. The whole, every, the front row's old. Everybody's old. The preacher's old. Everything's old. And he's 116 years old, and he won't sit down. <laughs> I see preachers. I see preachers. They be C now. Won't sit down. Still preaching. If he's so talk incoherent, he still won't sit down. This is old. Preach till he die. Look at look at First Corinthians. Look over at uh. First Corinthians chapter seven. Let me give y'all this. I'm gonna run after I give you this because this is gonna be it's gonna be tough on you. I'm telling you. Now concerning verse one. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for. Now listen. Then Paul saying y'all. Now y'all asked me a question, didn't y'all? <laughs> That's what Paul was saying. Did y'all not ask? Y'all asking me? Y'all wrote me. A, y'all want an answer, right? So I'm gonna give you an answer. So he's saying, what did you come to church for? That's what, let me just paraphrase that. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So Paul's saying to, to avoid fornication, get married. Just to avoid it. So that means avoiding fornication, uh, that's important, avoid it. There's no reason not to get married. You avoid, you, the main reason is avoid it. Because this is the fornication is oh I show y'all yeah, Paul talks I'm I ain't saying it. <laughs> let every listen to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. Right. Let every woman have her own right. husband. This is this this if we preach this in the church if we really preach this and stood on this, I would tell you about seventy five percent of the church would leave from every church. Every church in America, you would lose 75% of the people. If you really, if the preacher actually stood on this, you would lose 75% of the, of the people. Because people are so used to nobody saying nothing about it, never being convicted with it. But this is, the, 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 the damaging thing about this is, I'm going to show you, he's saying it. Look at this, verse 3. Let the husband render unto his wife, unto the wife, do benevolence, and likewise also unto the wife. Talking about don't refuse each other. Your body ain't yours. Once you get married, well, let's see it. Let's look at verse 4. The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife. So ain't, ain't no, ain't no, it's my, my body. You married now. If you're going to do it God's way. Don't get married and say, I don't want to have no kids now. I mean, you should have got married. It's not your body after you get married. Did you know I married you so I could get your body and you could get my body and it, it could be legal? That, that we got married because it's better to avoid, to avoid. Nevertheless, nevertheless, because of love, let every man get married. It's not saying that. Now look at the, I'm not, look at the Bible. Because of a big wedding letter, it's not saying that. It's giving you a prerequisite for marriage. It ain't talking about no external thing other than one thing, which is a good reason. So why are we talking about all this love and I got to know and my feeling, my heart? And that ain't, and that's not even a prerequisite. The number one reason the Bible says that you should get married is to avoid fornication. Now I believe you need to be equally yoked. People got to have their stuff together. But if, but if that's there, then why not? Oh, give me another Bible. Bring me a Bible. Bring me your Bible. Priest to my iPad went off. Let me read it out of this Bible here. So you even know, what's she even reading? You ain't on the wrong, you're on the wrong page. <laughs> Let me get done. The husband, are y'all there? The husband should fulfill his marital duty. Now this is, must be the NIV. Yeah, the NIV. The husband must fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise, the wife to her husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to the wife. 
Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again. It's, don't be playing no games in the urban sex. That's what the Bible's talking about. Don't be withholding playing games and I ain't going to give you none of all that stuff you're playing. Because the Bible says would you call you causing your spouse to be tempted. You don't, you don't withhold till you get no earrings and all that old stuff. And, you know, that, that's that, old, uh, uh, that's that old, old witchcraft stuff. Don't, don't do that to a man. I wouldn't do it in this day and age. If I was a woman, I would not do that in this day and age because it's, it's too much out here for you to be playing around. You better make, uh, you better make sure you handle your business because there's too much other stuff out there. And the bad thing about it, y'all sitting there telling the women who getting y'all men what y'all ain't doing. Don't tell them. Don't be telling no woman you ain't what you ain't doing. Just don't, don't keep, keep them out of your business. I say this as a concession, not, uh, uh, not as a command. I wish that all men were as I am. And then Paul saying, because Paul was single and celibate. <laughs> not single and having sex. He was single and celibate. Uh, but each man has his own gift. So he's saying him being single was a gift. Which means he had grace to be single. Grace to keep himself. And if you ain't got that, you ain't gifted there. Get out of the super deep. Verse 8, now to the... Are y'all there? <laughs> Some people don't know what's in the Bible. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am, but if they cannot control themselves, what, they should marry. What is the prerequisite? Contro they can't control themselves. They can't control themselves. They can't control themselves. Are y'all, are y'all, now listen to this the main thing that we're into, the main thing that we give all our money for, try to get more for, try to be cute for, all of that, he's saying that's the problem. That's keeping you from marrying. If you would just stop trying to get that and, and, and do it my way, you'll be fulfilled. Are y'all there? It says, but if he cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Burn with passion. We all know what that means. It's better to marry than to burn with passion. We used to think, we used to, we used to, we used to think that meant burn like go to hell. Which is, yeah, it could be possible. But to burn with passion is lust. You, you can't keep yourself. That's what it means. Now, why is it that we, I can trust God to take me to heaven, but I don't trust his word right here. I can trust that I'm saved, but I don't trust his word when it comes to this relationship. Why is that? See, that's your warfare. That's what Satan is using against you. Because he knows that your life will never get on track as long as you out of order in that area. Because he knows that is stop. That's a hindrance to your to your that's a hindrance to what God wants for you. Are you the Bible says a man that finds a I don't know why I'm even on this. I wasn't even gonna talk about this. The Bible says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. And then he obtains favor from God and man. When you find a wife, you find a good thing. You find a good thing when you find a wife. Then you start getting favor from sources that you couldn't get it before. This is the reason why if I was a man, well, I remember when I did, I remember that when I was making that decision. I said, man, I ain't got no favor. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I was struggling. So what's wrong? Got no favor. You get married, you get favor because God's got to bless you because of this woman you got. I know this is real old-fashioned preaching, but this keep you out of AIDS. This type of preaching keep you from having AIDS and keep you from going down there taking out wants on each other and all that stuff. Keep from breaking up furniture and fighting and stuff, you know, scratching cars and cutting tires. That's that stuff that you do when you ain't got no commitment and you don't know if they're going to be there in the morning or not. 
because they ain't committed to you. But when you get in a real committed marriage, you can rest, you can lay back, especially when a man's getting taught, you can lay back in peace and rest. Say amen. amen. Some of y'all don't know how it feel to, have a, to, to not worry about a man cheating. You don't even know how that feel to have a man, not even have to worry about that. But when you listen, and you listen to somebody with some wisdom, you save a lot of years. I wish somebody would have talked to me. I mean, if I knew what I knew 20 years ago, man, I would be a million, I don't know what, I would be so tough right now. But I didn't, I didn't have no wisdom. And I'm telling some of y'all who's, you think you know everything, listen to somebody. I'm trying to save you 15, 20 years of foolishness. One of the worst feelings is that you come, you come dragging in the church after 35 years of foolishness. You dragging in her, it's just starting your life over again. Thank God you're starting it over, but my God, you ain't got to start over 35, 40, 50 years old starting over. Listen to wisdom. Say, listen to wisdom. 